The American Bar Association caving to the woke by eliminating the LSAT and other standardized test requirements for admission. Yale and Harvard both claiming the exams her diversity. Here to react, George Washington University Law School student and campus reform correspondent, Tamina Diborzigi. Thank you for being with us this morning, Tamina. What's your Thank reaction you so to, at least, well, first of all, the American Bar Association saying, no, you don't have to require the LSAT anymore, and several law schools like Harvard and Yale seemingly ready to distance themselves from the LSAT. Well, every single law student remembers the time they took the LSAT. And of course, it is a very difficult exam for many of us. However, LSAT is one objective way to measure students' logical reasoning and writing abilities. Uh, and additionally, LSAT will test out how individuals are able to uh, understand complex uh, reading, uh, uh, reading passages. So getting rid of the LSAT will just make the admission cycle more subjective. We all know that not every Every school has similar uh, academic rigor, therefore GPAs are not necessarily the best way to measure candidates' academic success. So getting rid of the LSAT will not make the process easier for the candidates nor for the schools themselves. What's the motivation, do you think, of the ABA and these schools to, to drop the LSAT? Well, the campus reform has been looking into this trend happening nationally across the board. We see that uh, institutions uh, have been getting rid of the SAT and the ACT and they cite to the fact that a lot of underrepresented minority groups do not do well in these standardized exams. But that is not necessarily correct for a lot of minorities, including myself, this is the way that we can overcome a lot of barriers and biases that exist in the admission process. So the, the reason that they want to get rid of it is probably because they, they do not see the benefit of this. Maybe the ABA should look into this standardized exam as an opportunity for students to learn versus a barrier to entry. Well, that would be an interesting argument, I think, that they don't see the benefit. I mean, does the LSAT, which I took as well, by the way, does it actually help weed out students who, who do not, or, those, or does it help identify those that do understand, for example, logic? But it looks like um, it looks like the argument is actually well. Let's lean more on biographical information. Let's do our best now because you point out grades. Uh, you know, grades from one school don't match up with grades from another school. It looks like a workaround into diversity, looking at people's skin color and their backgrounds as a way to admit them into law school. And, and that is absolutely correct. As an Iranian immigrant, uh, I always fit in, fall into the white Caucasian group, and that creates a lot of issues for individuals like me that want to compete for law school admission. However, some objective method like the LSAT score allows many individuals coming from immigrant background to overcome these DEI biases. Getting rid of the LSAT will just create another barrier for individuals that uh, uh, have all do not fit uh, to those boxes and mm -hmm. Uh, for this reason, I believe that getting rid of the ELSA will not fix the problem with diversity. It just All makes right. it worse. All right, Tamina, thank you for joining us this morning on Fox and Friends. Thank you so much.